Yo, check out what just came in from Romania. Yes, the home of Dracula's castle. In this box, I have the Meze Imperium headphones. This is just a quick unboxing and review. Are these headphones for you? Let's find out. What's well, shaking guys, it's Audio Bacon. I wrote a review last year on the Meze Imperium headphones and mentioned it would be silly not to buy them. Most of the review units were jet black, but I opted for the more pretentious looking black copper version. So it should look good in 4K. Let's open this up. Check out this box. This is enormous. All right, let's open this up. Whoa. Bro, check out this steel flight case. During the review, I didn't think I would use it, but I did take them on a few trips with me and drove them with a laptop. But hey, it's what's on the inside that matters, right? Let's open this up. There's some latches here we just have to open up. Damn, son. These are the most exquisite looking pair of headphones I've ever seen. Check them out. We just need to throw some diamonds on them and we are good. Just kidding. It's kind of crazy because I remember seeing these headphones two years ago at a can jam and I couldn't stop staring at them. Super sexy. You check out the aluminum work here. Look at that. Real. Pretty amazing, all right? All right, let's take a look inside and see what's up. First, we have a card, hand signed by Antonio Meze himself. Very nice personal touch. Uh, we have the manual, which no one will read. Here we have a quarter inch. Uh, you could get them in different sizes, but I have a quarter inch OFC cable here. We have two pads, actually, the Alcantara. These are the same type of material you would find in cars. Here's a better look of the Alcantara pads. I have a nice metal mesh to the pads as well. They offer a meatier, darker tone and more bass. You'll get more percussive power and a fuller, more molded sound, but timbre and texture will take a hit. On the headphones themselves, we have the leather pads. As you can see here, I think most audio files will go for the leather pads because it has more hi-fi qualities to it, more clarity, truer tone, and more detail. It's also real leather, so that's actually pretty nice too. All right, let's focus on the headphones themselves. Here's a closer look at the headphones. You can tell it's very well designed. A lot of work went into this beauty. See why I went with the black and copper? Look at that shine, man. Ooh, pretentious, ooh, yeah. Let's talk about the ear cups. So these ear cups actually use a demagnetizing field generated by the drivers themselves to hold them into place. This is probably the easiest ear pad swap I've ever done on a headphone. As mentioned, the ear cups themselves are very high quality with a metal mesh. As you probably know, your ear pads are basically your room and can greatly impact what you hear. These headphones are hand assembled in Romania and the chassis takes 20 hours to sculpt and is CNC milled from a single piece of aluminum. Look at these ornate aluminum grills, man. It's pretty amazing. We have a carbon fiber headband, very flexible. This winged leather headband here ensures even pressure distribution and maximum comfort. The Imperium uses resistive adjusters for the ear cups. As you can see here, once you put them on your head, you can actually just adjust them to fit and they won't easily shift. Clamp pressure is perfect even for my big round Chinese head. During my review, I was able to listen to these headphones for an entire day without any pain. All right, let's take a quick look at the Renaro Planar Magnetic Driver. The diaphragm design is very unique. They are the first ISO Dynamic Hybrid Array headphone. 
This switchback coil here is meant for the lows and the smaller spiral coil is meant for the mids and the highs. When you put these on, the spiral section is supposed to be directed at your ear canal. Here's a closer look at the drivers themselves. It's pretty unique. As far as build, these headphones are among the best. The attention to detail, the solid construction, the real leather pads, the carbon fiber headband, it feels like a flagship headphone. All right, so how do these headphones sound and who should buy them? Well, first, these are $3,000 headphones. So if you're an early investor in Dogecoin, then just buy these, you won't regret it. Also, my Patreon is linked below if you wanna throw me a bone. For everyone else, these are the most natural sounding open back headphones on the market today. They're 31.6 ohms and 100 dB per milliwatt, so you can drive these with your phone. But it sounds better with a proper amp. As far as signature, it has this golden warmth that's not overly romantic. It's sufficiently detailed and it articulates music in a smooth and effortless manner. You won't get the largest soundstage, the most pinpoint imaging, or the most transparent or brilliant sound, but you do get something that's tonally organic. In addition, the Empyrean has outstanding reproduction of instrumental timbre. So everything is colored like they are in the real world. Consequently, it just has enough body and resolution to be enjoyable and believable. I have to say, this headphone gets the tonality better than some six-figure stereo systems I've heard. No joke. As far as treble, overtones are calmer but not mellow. It doesn't clang with perfect tangibility and metallic shine, but it does do enough to sound convincing. Light shakes of a tamarine and high-pitched flute still have good air and sparkle to them. There's no glare and it never comes off scratchy. Headphones that have better treble typically take away some of that sweet, delicious color from the mids. And personally, I'm not a fan of a neutral or cool mid-range, so I'm okay with that trade-off. Now, the Meze Imperian's primary strength is in the mids. If you listen to a lot of vocal recordings, it'll be tough to beat these headphones. Each voice and instrument has its own distinctive tone and textural cues. You can easily grasp the emotion and tension from the music. For example, you can very clearly hear the distinctions between a deeper and slow sound of a viola and the more vibrant and speedy sound of a violin. Another example in the track, Don't Call Me Angel, we have three wonderful female vocalists, Ariana Grande, Miley Cyrus, and Lana Del Rey. With the Meze Imperian, you can hear the differences in the grace, the bite, and the attitude of these vocalists. They each have their own way of seducing the recording and expressing themselves. And you can hear that with these headphones. As far as bass, it is top notch. It's a little light with the leather pads, but you'll get more definition and clarity. With the Alcantara pads, you get a better sense of slam from the kick drums and overall denser sound. The sub bass won't rock your core, but the gradations are present in the music. You can still hear the gradual expression of the low end. Overall, the bass quality isn't boomy or muddied and preserves the important parts. Although I do prefer more bass, I never felt like it was missing. Now, if I were to step back and summarize, I feel like the Empyrean sacrifices some of the technical attributes for something more musical. It ignores some of the audiophile's special effects for something that's more tonally variant and inviting. It doesn't try to show off or overemphasize anything. Music just flows with this connective tissue. Nothing ever sounds disjoint or disconnected. It's not too forward and not too laid back. The music just breathes. This headphone is smoother than it is tactile and more relaxed than it is energetic. You won't get any fatigue over long listening sessions, yet hear enough material presence of brass, woodwinds, and strings. It has more of a rustic sound with a slight bloom on the outlines of the performers and instruments. Consequently, it won't give you an x-ray into the music or articulate everything with laser precision. The bottom line is this. It's not gonna be for everyone. Those who tend to chase a broader and deeper soundstage, transparency, neutrality, and ultra high resolution might prefer another headphone like the Abyss or the Sennheiser HD 800. The Meze Empyrean is a high-end headphone that was strictly designed for the enjoyment of music. And that's it. The beauty is that you don't feel like you're taking an exam while listening to these. You're more in front of that fireplace with some hot cocoa. And to my ears, it probably sounds closer to what the intent of the artist was more than most of the headphones out there. 
It's balanced in a way that pulls you in and keeps you listening to your favorite tunes without fatigue. By the way, there's an art gallery collection for these headphones now. These limited edition headphones are pan painted and will run at least $4,000. I think they only make a hundred of each. I really wanted that red and black Phoenix, red and black if you couldn't tell, but I ain't a Bitcoin millionaire. It'll be interesting to see what other designs they come up with in the future. As for comparisons, I have the Abyss AB1266 5CC. I haven't upgraded these to the TC drivers yet. As a quick comparison, the Meze Empyrean and the Abyss have a very different signature and feel. First, the Abyss has to be adjusted properly, the ear pads have to be adjusted properly, the headband has to be adjusted properly, and once that's set, then you, you'll experience the maximum potential of these headphones. The Abyss is more physical, more confident, very precise, and super clean. They also scale very well with better equipment. As far as dynamics and sonic pressure, they remind me a lot of two-channel systems and sometimes feels like you have a pair of subwoofers on your head. Great rhythm, depth, and detail. I love these headphones because they tell me exactly what's in the recording while still being fun to listen to. It's perfect for the critical listener. And if you're curious, is how it looks on my head. The biggest drawback of the Abyss, at least for me, is that I do prefer a... Man, it's spitting a lot. <laughs> I do prefer a warmer signature. The Abyss is more neutrally colored. In order to warm up the sound, I would have to buy a $15,000 Woo Audio WA33 headphone amp, which is the best amp I've ever heard for these headphones. The Meze Empyrean, on the other hand, doesn't have most of the technical qualities of the Abyss, which includes etching out the finer details, embracing transparency, speed, and tangibility. The Abyss images really well and separates and outlines with incredible precision. But out of the box, the Meze Empyrean is more tonally true. Voices and instruments have more natural color to them. The Empyrean is more down to earth and promotes a lusher and more chill listening experience. It's not trying to show you everything, just enough for you to believe in the music. Each of these headphones have their pros and cons, but both offer outstanding sound quality. If you're a lover of music and enjoy a warmer sound, I highly suggest you give the Meze Empyrean a listen. Hopefully this quick overview was informative. Let me know in the comments what your favorite high-end headphones are and what you'd like to see reviewed. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell for the algo, and I'll fry up the next one.